Well, welcome back to our second installment of What Came Back from Market. Um, hopefully, I mean, it didn't look as much as the first session, but then I have a bag over here in the corner that uh, may be a session all on its own. But let's get started. Don't forget, turn over a fresh page in your notebook, have an extra pen ready, got your water, your drink, your tea, your tea. Got your lunch taken care of. Here we go. All right. Buckle up. Was it buckle up? Buckle up. Here buckle in. Um, from Stitching with the Housewives, the May installment of Month to Month is here. And I've talked about this in the floss tube before. This is stitched on 28 count white Monaco using classic color works. Also has a DMC. Um, conversion. Um, the wire basket that it's mounted on is from Hobby Lobby and there's a five inch tart tray. She has put all this information on the back of the pattern and um, there's also a finishing tutorial that's on her YouTube channel. So she gave you everything you needed here. Even where to get the backing board and the whole bit. So she's very thorough. So those of you who are doing month to month, here's May. And then we have um, the next in the Adorables. This is Spring Bunnies. And this is done on 28 count black even weave with classic color works. DMC conversions also on here. Look at that door. That's very cute. Looks like a good storm door. And again, she has all the information for the finishing items on the back of her pattern. I like the walking sticks. I wonder if I'm seeing the same thing <laughs> you guys are. Uh, the carrot and the... The carrots. Mm. Oh, yeah. Carrot walking sticks. I like sticks. the carrot wreath and then the basket there at the bottom. Oh, it's a wreath. Okay. Yeah. I thought they were just carrots that they strung up Here. to dry for Can later. You see that one? That might give you a better the... idea of the door. Yeah. <laughs> and the chicks at the top and the border. That's cute. All right. And then the next one. Welcome home for summer. can't see the front. This is 28 count black even weave, classic color works DMC. The basket can be found at Hobby Lobby. Again, everything's on the back here that you need to finish it. Does it have sunflowers on it? Lots. Those are good sunflowers. Lots of sunflowers. I like sunflowers. So that's welcome home for summer. And then the market exclusive from them this year is a garland piece that's called Mary. And this is done on 28 count black even weave, DMC alternative, only two colors, uh, classic color works also. And let's see, I'm sure there's a finishing tutorial on how to finish those. But I thought this was really cute. So that's it for Stitching with the Housewives and we move on to Annie B's. And these were the release for market, the blue work pairs. They're stitched on 35 count light khaki. Um, and it looks like one color of floss, possibly, um, oh, dinky dye silk, but it also gives a DMC, I believe, thought I saw that. Yes, it'll be given in the key. So on the back, the dinky dyes is this first number. And then after the slash, that 930, that's the DMC number. So that'll give you a, a good idea. If you have the dinky dye, great. If not, and after we saw this one, I got to looking and I went, huh, 
they have a red work pair, which I thought was really, really pretty. So we went ahead and picked this up. It's 36 count antique cotton linen by r, &R Reproductions. Um, a Dinky Dyes Cranberry Cocktail. DMC conversion is also on here. And the little bit of wool that you need for the stem and the leaves. And the fabric for the backing. So those would be fun. Those would be fun in a bowl or in a dough bowl or just sitting around in a little collection. So if you followed Annie B's at all, you know that um, we had the gift tag ornaments, one and two. Here's three and four. I thought these were very cute. It's done on 25 count raw Dublin. Those are cute. Linen, uh, DMC, Classic Color Works and Weeks Dye Works. Uh, got some buttons in there too. Cute buttons. Yeah. And those look like they come from Mill Hill. And I think that's all I'm seeing on here. I was looking to see if there was a finishing uh, video somewhere, but she just tells you where to get everything. It wouldn't be too hard to finish. Maybe they'll do that on their, one of their floss tubes. Yeah. And then we have the Blooming Bunnies Trio. We all thought these were sweet little bunnies. These are stitched on 40 count Regency linen by Picture This Plus. Um, I like the one that says hop. It has yeah. flowers. Flower decoration. I love the bunny. You got the Aloha Bunny. Yeah. With the flower wreath. Uh-huh. So, Needlepoint, let's see, I think it's Needlepoint Silks They she has on here, but also the DMC conversion is on here, which I thought those were cute. So, it's not too early to start stitching for Easter, so you can have those out for the spring. And then we like to bounce around to the seasons. Um, this is a booklet that has 12 sled wow. ornament patterns in it. It's called Let's Go Sledding. And these are done on 14 count antique brown perforated paper. And they use, uh, they mount them on the four inch craft sleds. They're the, the smaller ones that we carry. The finishing instructions are included. Um, looks like DMC floss. So these are quick stitches. I mean, you're going on a snowman. Oh, yeah. Going on a trip this summer or spring break, you'll be in the car, you can knock out a lot of these. You can keep them for your tree. You can give them as gifts. You can... So, uh, they have them displayed like a wreath. Mm -hmm. Is there finishing to make a wreath? Um... I can't tell if she's just got them. I think that's flat just how she had them laid with out. With a bell in between them, or if it's like all attached and constructed as a wreath. I don't think they're all attached. I think where you see the handles, uh -huh. they're just overlapped. Okay. So, yeah, you would want those individual. I mean, could you imagine a wreath, though? Yeah. That would be cool. I mean, that would be. You would be the talk of the town. You'd be the only yes, one with would. the coolest wreath in the neighborhood. Well, unless word got out and everybody else did the same <laughs> everybody thing, Everybody else is at always in stitches. <laughs> We're here for the... Do you have any of the sleds left? That's right. So we went to... Um, I believe it was Shannon Christie Designs. And she had a couple really cute samplers. This is the farmhouse sampler. I really liked this one. This is done on 14 count. Yeah, I like the colors. Yeah. Um, DMC floss. Back stitch and cross stitches. That's no specialty stitches at all. Lots to see in there. So I thought that was a great sampler. And then if you wanted something a little more... Um, Let's, I have trouble with words well, today. I see a piggyback ride going on in progress in this cross stitch. 
<laughs> I'm sure there's... Well, I mean, that happens on the farm, so... But then the next one I have is called Morning Glory Manor. And it's a little more of a stately one. It's also done on 14 count with DMC floss. I have a number chart here that you can change out the numbers. So that was fun. And that's a new designer for us? Um, yeah. Cool. She's new to us. Nice. Then I stopped by um, Summerhouse Stitch Works, and they do the um, the small charts that there's, I think, eight of them that you can stitch together or as pillows. And this year is the theme is Berlin, the Berlin wool work. And I was real curious as far as the inspiration behind this, and she looked at me and she said, it's the Berlin wool work. I'm not all that familiar with it, but she said this one is a little more detailed and um, probably a little bit different than the other ones because I know the series I'm working on now, you use the same flosses throughout the whole thing. So you might on this one also, but I think they're going to be a little different. So this is the first one. And it's got a house and... Oh, there's pink flamingos flying over. I don't think so. <laughs> what are they? Well, I need to turn it okay. around. Tell me those aren't flamingos flying over. I really don't think those are flamingos flying over. Oh. But the, the classic trees and the house, the little cottage... That's cute. I like the I like her colors. Yeah. The way she chooses her colors. Yeah. She, I thought that of the the series that you did. Uh huh. I like the colors of that one. Yeah, these colors are different than the one that I'm working on right now. She's using it looks like classic color works in DMC, fresh brew, Dublin Bay, brandied pears, eggshell, polywog, bean sprout, rose petal, chili pepper, Tennessee red clay, and loden. So those are, she does this on a 32 count country French golden needle from Weichel. So that was the first one. I really like this like, one. You like this one? Yes. So there's a deer in the wreath. And they use, yeah, she uses the same floss. So through the whole series, you will use the same floss. So all the colors will coordinate together. Same fabric, same everything. And, and there is a complimentary border pattern on her website that you can stitch these all together and you'll you'll have the border. The quilt that I did for the shop sample, I had to fussy cut the deer mm -hmm. because it was part of the center of a block and the deer had a wreath around its neck. Mm -hmm. This one, the wreath is around the deer. It almost matches yeah. that quilt perfectly. Well, there you go. You have to get busy on these, Peter. I do. I and got then, the Peter made me do it list. That's right. I I went a little steampunkish on this one. Okay. It's called Superior Bees, Professor Hiveman's Clockworth Pollinators. Huh. So. Hiveman, <laughs> Professor Hiveman. <laughs> the keys are the, the bees. bees. Hold on, let me get close so we can see that. Where's the key again? It's right here. Keys oh, are the bees. Right there. It's like the head and the tail of the bee. But I just thought it was different. It was fun. If somebody was looking for something different, this would be definitely it'd be a fun stitch. It would be. Well, and then there's some more bees down here. Yeah. So I guess those are the bigger bees. They're the grown-up bees. Yeah. Fun flowers. They look like pinwheels. I, I got to say the name again. I love it. Professor Hiveman's Clockwork Pollinators. <laughs> no, no po pollinations. Pollinations. Yep. It's a mouthful. Yes, it is kind of like that other big word I said, <laughs> but I don't even remember how to say it now. Yeah. Ugh. Okay, then we spent some time with Janice with Needle, Noteworthy Needle, and she had some really cute designs, um, some with a lot of really cool embellishments on them. And this one is called Ode to the Stork. 
says, once a tool for the midwife forever remains in stitching life. So you're going to stitch all of this. Here's the charm, the stork scissor charm for right there. And then over here in your finishing, you have a pair of stork scissors that will wow. be included in the pattern kit. Wow. So gives you, you know, something I'd be curious as to know about the saying on there. If it was, did the midwife use stork scissors? And they evolved into a cross stitch and needlework type scissors? I don't know. She doesn't. Pretty neat. Oh. But Here's wait, there's more. Historical umbilical cord clamps were fashioned after storks because of their shape and association with delivering babies. Midwives more than likely carried needle embroidery to work on during long labors. This has carried on with storks being an iconic shape for embroidery scissors for years. There we go. Okay, so there were stork-like clamps mm -hmm. that they used during birth, then carried over to the being in labor for so long that that's the, the tool. Midwives were doing embroidery work. The midwives were doing That's neat. Yeah. So I thought that was fun. I thought so we So I literally now know, because I know, okay, I've seen stork scissors for the longest time and just thought, okay, it, I never thought about it. Yeah. All these years, I now yep. know. Now you know. And you guys know. You can ask people now yeah. and quiz them. Hey, right. hey, why are there stork scissors? Yeah. Okay. This pattern has a story. This is called Extravaganza, revisited on Linden. Last year, or two years ago, she released these patterns that went on large paper mache eggs. Well, right after she released this, let me think. Uh, I believe it was Doris closed, and that's who carried the paper mache eggs. So she had to come up with something different, and these were great patterns. I mean, I bought the other one. So now she has re, not recreated, but redid the pattern to where it will fit on linen. So um, using DMC floss, 32 count Belfast white flax linen. Um, you can just use scraps of fabric that you've got that would fit the design area and um, she's got on the back here finishing um, sources and rickrack oh she che cheated she used double sided tape to put the rickrack around so these will be fun. They're easy stitch. There's not a lot to them. You can knock them out in no time and have some fun things to go with the bunny that we showed you earlier. So that's extravaganza. And then she had some creative things this year. This is called Charming Christmas. And it says, we wish you a charming Christmas. And in each of the center of these squares, you will put a charm. And you can do this in the red, as she used here in the sample. Or I was thinking it would be beautiful in a green. So whichever color you prefer, you could use. Can you alternate red and green? You could. Like a plaid? Mm-hmm. I don't know if it'll work out. The two won't touch, but... Oh, Am red, I? green, red, green, red green, red, green, red. I think if you did it that way, it'd work. Um, looks like it has a Smyrna cross, an upright cross, French knots, back stitching, running stitch. Got some fun stitches in there. She used Christmas red DMC, and this is done on Belfast white linen. really cute. The charms are awesome. Yeah, they and they're metal. They're not plastic. Nice. So the real deal. Okay, we took a trip over to Praiseworthy Stitches. And in this fun little present box, I mean it looks just like a present. 
Um, <laughs> it's called Cardinals and Evergreens, and I believe it's a bookmark and a scissor fob. If you can see, look through the bottom, there's like the little charms, there's floss, there's fabric in there. Looks like everything to finish out. Mm-hmm. Ribbons. Yeah. That's cool. It even has the cross stitch fabric in there. And then it's got its own gift box. Yeah. So I thought that was cute. So I'd be curious to see. Good Christmas up. gift to stitch and give yeah. to somebody. And then as I liked the one Halloween Quaker, we have simple gifts. And this one says snow. And I guess this is part of a series of Quaker-inspired designs. Um, this was stitched on 32 Crystal Ariel from Picture This Plus. And looks like she used Weeks Dye Works with the DMC conversion. French knots, back stitches, cross stitches. Um, on the snowflakes, they did use one strand of a Krynik blending filament. So it gives it a little more sparkle. So that'll be fun. This is um, 212 by 214 stitch count. So it's going to... It's going to finish anywhere from 15 by 15 to a 10 by 10, depending on what count you use. So, that's that one. Then we went to Plum Street, and this is the only pattern that I picked up there. I do have another one coming. This is called Penny Spring, and it's done on 36 count. There's a party. Yeah, we weren't invited. I think it's... A fogato um, linen from Fiber on a Whim, Weeks Dye Works, Classic Color Works, DMC. Um, the other one, I have to find it. Ah. Uh, there was also another collaboration between a few of the shops or the designers. And um, between Plum Street and Heartstring Samplery, they did um, Muhammad Ali's quote, uh, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. This is Heartstring, sting like a bee. And it was done on Vintage Country Mocha, 40 count. Looks like all DMC. And then the companion piece of float like a butterfly, we ordered that from Plum Street, so we will be getting that one. So you got to do both of them together. I mean, it just doesn't make sense to have one or the other. You need to have both. And then we took a trip to JBW, and I talked to Judy there, and we brought back Stitching in the Round. And if you've done any of our other stitching in the rounds. I think there were rabbits in the round, owls in the round. She said several. Um, this is two colors of floss. Um, DMC, classic color works. And they have a couple. This is a round box from Hobby Lobby that they mounted it on, so that's one way to finish it. Or this one on the front and then there's an over one model of just a small a real small stitch of a pair of scissors so you could pull any of that out of there to do little little small projects so then her market exclusive she was pretty mysterious about her market exclusive she did not show it you had to go to market and see it so there was no preview so it's called Lena's Pin Keep Pillow. And this is the kit. Um, this was originally stitched in 1872. 
a marking sampler is a small piece of cloth with the alphabet numbers and possibly the name of the girl who made the sampler. The alphabet and ciphers were regarded as enough for a person to show that she would be able to make an object such as a garment with a name and a number. So that's interesting. So in here you get, here's your cross stitch fabric. And there's probably your backing fabrics, your ribbon and your rickrack. And you even get the floss in there. So she's included everything in here. So I, I did read something at lunch that she is out of the kits, but she is gathering the materials to make more. So it was a very popular thing. And I think the mystery she shrouded it with helped her sell out. But that'll be Some fun. nice components. Yeah. Um, it's done on, looks like 28 count light mocha. And there's a lot of people who like to stitch her stuff. Yeah. So those are two good things. Um, Kathy Barrick, when we, when Dawn and I went to a retreat, I think it was back in August, maybe. Um, Kathy Barrick was there at the retreat, and she, this was her pattern that she um, presented to us in kits and everything. And so she released it for market. It's called I Give You My Hand. This is done on 40 count linen from Fox and Rabbit. I believe sh the darker version is done on seaweed and we just got that in. Um, so then the lighter can be anywhere from a white. I believe where there's white here, they've changed out some of the colors so that it didn't you didn't lose the pattern. Um, DMC is the floss. Would this be, could somebody do this for a wedding sampler? Like for a wedding gift, I mean? You could. Like as a wedding present? I yeah. give you my hand and then maybe put their initials yeah, someplace? Maybe change out some of this here in the center and put their initials or leave off a motif on either side and put their initials there. I know people are looking for those um, mm -hmm. like gifts for people like when they get married. Yeah. So she said when you go to do the, the ruffle down mm -hmm. here, this is all stitched. She said there are some inconsistencies, so to count carefully. So just a heads up. Sorry, I've left you and tell you. Sorry. All right, then we went to see Manny D. Donna. And we had a good size order um, coming from her. So... The first one is a Patriotic Welcome Pillows for you Patriotic Stitchers. This was stitched on Weeks, uh, no, let's see, it's with Weeks Dye Works Threads, 32 Count Cocoa by Weeks Dye Works. And she used uh, Sandy Gold Pom Poms by Lady Dot Creates. So again, some cute bowl fillers or just something to set in an arrangement with. And then this is the red box sewing box. Now this is kind of like the, the class we'll just be finishing up next month that you actually build the box by the directions in this pattern. Um, this is done on 32, town, 32 count cocoa with the uh, Weeks Dye Works DMC conversions inside. Um, if you can see these pins right here we have the pins and I believe the accessory kits that you can make everything just like it is on this picture. And we have beeswax too. Yeah. Those little shapes would look cute. Yeah, well those come with the kit also. So you get everything. Oh. You get it you all. You get it all. Here it always in you stitches, get you all. get it all. And, and then some. I don't want to mess myself up. Um, as a follow-up class, I didn't want to do another box like the House of Keys. I thought we need something different. So this will be a class. Um, I don't think we'll have the patterns available until after the class. This is called United We Stand. It's oh, a sewing box. That's cool. It's got drawers. Yeah. 
And instead That's of so having cool. a lid, the drawers come out from the uh, sides. And I thought, That's really different. Yeah. So um, this will be a class, so be on the lookout for that and sign up pretty quick because I only have six spots in that. And then we have Old Main Street. And this is done on 32 count hand dyed linen old lawn, which this is the fabric right here. Has that got a glare on it? No. Okay, good. So this is a fabric that she uses in this pattern. And she uses classic color works with a DMC conversion. Um, the stitch count is 194 by 59. So that's a fun stitch. And then this is a seasonal salt salt box pillows. So we've got all four seasons here. Oh. <laughs> These are adorable. And then this is burnt sand. This is the linen that she uses. It's a 32 count. So you got your scarecrow holding the quilts up in the bottom. You got your flamingos in this one. Um, you had a sheep on the spring and snowmen on the winter. And oh, that's, that's beautiful. Yeah. 32 count? Yep. Nice. So we've got all those. And then shepherd's bush. Oh dear. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not sure if I was expecting to go there, but we did. And it's a good <laughs> thing I did. Because the project bags that we have out here, um, there's a, the stitch is the model. They had a winter one that came out in January, and somehow we missed it. Hmm. So here's the winter. It goes on a winter bag, goes on a blue one. Oh, he is nice. Yeah. So we got that one, and I think she's added buttons. Mm. And I think, yeah, I see some nice yeah. mitten buttons. They're from just Snowflake another button, button company. Snowflake star and a heart. Mm -hmm. So, and then the newest one is spring. And she's got her sheep in there, her bees like some baskets and there's also a pin cushion and key fob pattern in here that you can make to go with it so this one's done on a pink bag the peony pink and then more patriotic we got the red white and blue the sheep at the top with the flag. This is a kit. It comes with all your floss, your fabric, the button, and even the needle. They thought of everything. I need to remember that because um, people are always looking for kits yeah. where it, with everything that has everything in there. So I'm gonna, it's going to be hard for me to remember, but we need to remember that because yeah. that would be a, a great... I'm going to recommend this as a beginner. It is. Because of the size of the count yep. and the letters. That'd be a great beginner yeah. kit. And it's got, it looks like just a little tiny bit of back stitching up around the flowers. Other than that, the rest is all cross stitch. That's pretty cool fabric. Yeah. So that's that one. And then if you have done the Embrace the Journey bag, they have one released this year called the Liberty Bag, and it says Land of Liberty. Oh, I know who's doing that. Yeah. Not going to mention any names, Lenine. And so this is a Oh, kit. I can see Deborah doing this too, as long as it's on 16 count. It's not. She can sub. <laughs> She'll have to make a sub. Yeah. So it comes with your floss, um, the bag, the buttons. I can't tell if there's a needle in there. I thought I 
yeah, looks like there's a needle in there. So this is a, a kit that you could just pick up and take with you. Everything's in there. And then hands-on design. She's kind of one of our, our staple. Like staple. Yeah, she's always here. So um, if you're doing the triple play pillows, here is a spring basket. And she had samples of these, and these are actually bigger than I thought they were. This is done on 32 count flax Belfast linen. I would have loved to have seen those like in person. Yeah, they were very pretty. Man. It's DMC floss. Uh, that is, that's got to be so stunning. Did you see these in person? Mm -hmm. Were they stunning? Yes. <sighs> so this is kind of a mix of quilting and cross stitching mm -hmm. when you go to finish the pillow. I'm really liking this one up there a lot. So she had that one. And then there was another collaboration going on. It was called Between Friends. And I'll show you the back because I'm not sure the front has everything in it. But this is called a spring sampling. So you have your sampler here at the center. And then there's some stacking I think pin I'm cushions. getting a glare. Are you? Does That's that better. Yeah. Okay. And then there's a needle book. And then I think this is called a pocket pillow. Oh, neat. Yeah, so you make a pillow, you do the stitching, then there's a little pocket. So this was between hands-on designs and summer house stitches. And I'll turn it around and you can get a bigger picture of the, the sampler. So these ladies worked together and did a good job coming up yeah, with some great did. projects. Okay, now the next one's going to take a little explanation. Well, not a whole lot. Let's see. Those will. If you're doing the plaid all year, she has three new ones for all you <coughs> Canadians, friends who that are Canadian. There's this one called O Canada. And then Happy Easter. And then the 4th of July. Hmm. And I think she came out with a pattern that had the four seasons. So these are additional ones to go with that. And we also picked up the on the edge shelf design that you put together. You can paint it. And then you can mount your, um, it's actually this shelf that it's, dis it's mounted on. This kit makes this shelf. So you can trade out That's your. That's pretty cool. Yeah, you can trade out your. I like that we got that. Pictures. So, and then Kathy Haberman is a big supporter of Special Olympics. She has a son who is very involved in the sports and she, he and her husband are, I think they're golfers together and I, I can't tell you all the events that he enters. But the um, Polar Plunge series that she is doing this year, I think I have these all backwards. Um, there are six, six designs two more will be released in the next couple months and then the sixth one if you want to do it, you have to go to her website to order it from there because all of the proceeds from all those patterns that are ordered for the sixth in the series, all the proceeds will go directly to Special Olympics. Wow. So she every year she tries to do some type of That's a fundraiser awesome. with that, but this is what she's done this year. So I thought for a second you were going to say to get the sixth of the series, you had to go do the polar plunge. <laughs> Well, you know, she could do that. <laughs> so here's Polar Bear Peak. This is the first one. Oh, he's so cute. Yes, he is. And I believe we have the fabric on order right now. Um, Look at that face. Let's see. It's on 32 count Polar Plunge Fabrics by Stephanie. Classic Colorworks. And 
we have the finishing boards. We picked those oh, up. Oh, yay. Now, How convenient. She shows like a snowflake design on the back. I believe that is like scrapbook paper. Um, oh. I'm trying to read back here to see if she says there's scrapbook a scrapbook paper. Yeah. Clever. So you would just get trace the scrapbook it. paper, trace it, mm -hmm. and then cut it out. And I think she kind of roughed the edges to make them look a little old to where the white in the fabric came out. Oh, emery board? Yeah. So there's the polar bear peak. Here's Wally the walrus. I like his whiskers. Look at those twofers. Yep. And then whale. Hello there. Got a good whale. So we got a couple more that we'll have here on the shop. And then the last one, you will need to go to her website. And she gives you that those directions on the back. As far as, you know, one through five, you can get from us. But then six, you have to go to her website. So... I appreciate that she's doing that. That's pretty awesome. So we didn't forget the beginning stitchers or the kids. We found some great kits out here. These are ones called Kid Stitch. And it includes fabric, floss, frame, and needle, and your pattern. So we tried to get a variety, some for the boys and some for the girls. Great 4-H um, projects if your child is just getting into the cross-stitch part. And then I picked up three more that um, if you're just getting back into cross-stitch or you're a beginning cross-stitcher, these would be good. Have a trick-or-treat. I have a pumpkin stack and a fox. So those are quick, easy stitches. Good way to jump back in. Good way to teach your, your child how to cross stitch. So I was excited about getting those. And then somebody on the... One of the floss tubes, I think we asked them about their favorite designer. And they said they didn't have a favorite designer, but somebody requested 16 count fabric. So we talked with um, a new to us fabric dyer, it's called Forbidden Fiber, and you 16 count stitchers. We heard you. We brought back five new colors. Those are nice. This is cumulus. This goes, you know, to a couple shades of blue. Looks like there's a little bit of pink, maybe lavender in there. This one is daffodil. It's got your yellows and your peaches and white. And then your stonehenge, which is kind of a bluish gray color. And then up here is toasted coconut, which is a good neutral. Again, these are all 16 count Ada. And I love this one, the honeydew. Mm -hmm. It's got your shades of green with the white. So those will be hitting the floor soon. And we did talk with um, Atomic Ranch Fabrics. And I'll be doing some more checking into what he offers. Um, he had some really nice fabrics. So we'll be checking into them. Nice. Okay. Well, that is what we have to show you for the second segment here. Um, there will be a third. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we'll get that done tomorrow. And you guys will get to see everything we brought back from market. I did, I did, I did order the... Um, market cookbooks so the unique thing about these cookbooks say is, what yes there are small charts from the designers 
in this cookbook. So they encouraged us as shops to turn in recipes, but then the designers also turned in recipes to create this cookbook, and they included a small chart in there. So I think it's going to come out to be like twelve ninety nine for the cookbook. Okay, so potentially one of my favorite designers will have a recipe in the cookbook. Mm -hmm. And a chart. So it's worth purchasing. Um, Where do I sign up? <laughs> <laughs> Down in the comments. I'm ready to buy it now. <laughs> so um, I will show the cover of that on our third segment. And for those of you who are waiting, yes, we did bring Primrose back. And Primrose gets their own segment, if that tells you anything. So, I hope you enjoyed what we brought back so far, and you've made your list, and you're ready to stitch some of these new designs out and to enjoy them, and we'll see you next time.